Hi, welcome to my channel. Today we're gonna be unboxing the Eureka Crate. This is so exciting. This is new to our to my channel, whatever channel this is, and I'm so excited to unbox it with you. So if you are new to my channel, I create this channel as a homeschooling resource to give you unboxings, which is what we're doing today to give you curriculum ideas, organizational ideas, and ways to invite Christ into your homeschool space. So if you're interested in those things, please hit that subscribe button and let's get into this box. Okay, so today we're gonna be unboxing the Eureka Crate and this is new to my channel. This box I think is a $29.95. I didn't look it up before I got on here. <laughs> the other boxes except for the Maker Crate are around $20, but you can get them all cheaper if you buy a longer subscription. If I have any codes that are currently active, I'll make sure they're linked down below. They're constantly changing codes and you can usually find one on their website as well to get a, you know, a better deal. So if you wanna use any of those, you totally can, but let's, let's open this. We've waited long enough. So this is a mechanical lock box. It says learn how, to, how a pin tumbler lock works and create a safe for your stuff so your mom can't get into it. So my son is gonna be using this. This is for 14 to 104 year olds. <laughs> my son is not within that age range, but he has been doing the Tinker Crate and it's been getting too easy for him. And so we're gonna try this out. My son is nine-ish, nine he's nine and a half-ish years old. So we're gonna try this one out for him and see how it goes. But this is what it looks like when we open it up. So we can see our lock box here. And this is, again, gonna be a new experience for me. This book is like super thick. The Tinker Crate comes with blueprints. The other crates come with instructions and then like a little magazine. So I'm not really sure if all the instructions are in here or if they're somewhere else. Okay, it looks like they're in here. So there are pages back here. All the instructions are back here. And so there you go. And it gives you some other things about locks. So this kind of seems like it's instructions and magazine all squished into one. So we're gonna hold up pieces. There's just gonna be a lot of pieces here. That's, that's what this is. It's, it's involved. There's a lot of pieces. So we have a whole bunch of like screws. There is the cutest little screwdriver. You see that right there? It's like so little. <laughs> And then we have more pieces right here. These are like blue plastic pieces. They're springs. This is a large key. That's a really big key. I'm glad I don't have to carry that one around. And this is a bunch of foam pieces here. And then I'm not sure what these are. If they're just like little stickers, I'm not really sure. And then we got a bunch of wood pieces. These are all kind of separated. So that's probably important, right? <laughs> they're separated. I'm not really sure. And then the last thing in here is all these bigger pieces. So this looks like the outside of this clock right here. Well, it's not a clock, but it's a lock box, whatever that means. <laughs> Anyways, and so that looks pretty cool. So I'm excited for him to try this out. I just, I really wanna see, first of all, like how easy it is for him, how well he follows instructions, cause that is not always an easy task. And then just what we can do with it, you know, how cool it is in the end. So I'm gonna let him get at it and we will let you know how it goes. crate and he had a lot of fun. He was so, so excited to do this. He just bugged me about it for several days. And so he was excited when he finally got to do it. It took about an hour, so a lot longer than doing the Tinker Crate. And I did help him, not a whole lot, but there were some things that just required more than two hands. <laughs> so he needed some help. So I'm gonna hold it up so you can see this lock box right here. So it looks really cool. 
I just love kind of the design of it and it's a lot of fun. He wanted to paint it and I was like, doesn't the wood just look cool though? So I'm gonna put the key in and open it. Sometimes this is a little bit finicky. They have troubleshooting things. I'm gonna scoot over so you can see. <laughs> they have some like troubleshooting things if you wanna try them out, which we sort of did, but then there comes a point where it's just kind of harder. It doesn't feel like it's helping anymore. So it does work most of the time, but then it kind of gets a little bit stuck, but it opens up and he has Pokemon cards in here and money. I didn't know he had his Pokemon cards. Yesterday he just had his money, but I think he did it all up in a like rubber band, in a little band like this so that he could fit more stuff. So then he has his Pokemon cards in there. And then let's see if we can get it. Sometimes you just have to like jiggle it a little bit and then it'll close. There it goes. And so it's sometimes it opens super smoothly and closes super smoothly. And sometimes it's a little bit trickier. So like I say, it gives troubleshooting ideas of how to help that because sometimes the bolts, the screws right here are just not quite tight enough. And they, if they have a little bit of wiggle in them, it gets us a little bit stuck. But for the most part, it works super, super well. So the part that took the longest obviously was this whole front part. Putting the box together at the end was easy. It just has these little wooden pieces and then you put you open this up and stick your hand in and put a little stopper on the other side that keeps it in place so the whole assembly of the box at the end was super super quick this part <laughs> took a long time to get it all right but something that i thought was super cool was putting together the key lock and there's actually kind of a picture in here that you can see so it talks about the pin tumbler lock and how you go through it so all the layers involved. I see, you know, you see the thick key locks, but I don't ever really think about like how this all works and stuff. So putting it together was really cool because it has all these different, I don't know what pins, I guess they're called. I don't know a whole lot about locks, but you put the different sizes in and it tells you in this layer, okay, you're gonna put the medium one. And then you put on another layer and then you put the small one and you keep going to fit the grooves of the key. And it was, it was really fascinating for me. <laughs> I don't know if he thought it was as cool as I did, but I just thought that was really cool learning a little bit more about the inner workings of a lock. So that part took a while to get that all lined up and then to try to make sure the pins were tight enough or the screws, I guess I keep calling them pins. So the hardest thing about these is you put the, the part that screws into it is on the other side in here, you can't see it. But these spin, it has you put tape like little stickers on them. There's some extra ones in here. So there's just these white stickers. They don't hold super well. They hold enough, but not super well. So I would help by putting my finger on it while he tried to put the screw in it. But then if it gets tight enough, it just starts to spin because there's nothing to hold on to. Like some other things I've done like this, you can at least hold on to them with uh, needle nose pliers or something, but this you can't. So you try to get them as tight as you can. If there's a little bit of gapping, you might undo them and they give you these little plastic washers you can use to put on there to make sure there's not a whole lot of gapping there. So that was kind of the trickiest part. We undid a few of them, put them back together, <laughs> tried again and everything like that. Overall, I think it works pretty well. Again, it just gets, it gets stuck sometimes. And then also we get to use the world's cutest screwdriver. Look at this thing. It is so adorable <laughs> and it worked pretty well. Like it is kind of small, which that's hard to get grip on. So if you wanted to get a bigger screwdriver, if you have one that you could use, that might be easier. But this thing, like it's adorable because it's so small. So that, that was really fun. That was really fun for him to use. And when he saw it, he was like, oh, look at this cute screwdriver. So that was really cool. And then it also has some things about picking locks in here. I don't know if you want your kids learning that. Maybe you do, I don't know. And that would be a cool thing to, to learn how to do. And then I'm trying to think if there was anything else that I should mention as far as hard. Obviously we had to put together all these pieces right here. You have to line them up in a certain way. And so this is an E, so you have to make sure the E is facing the right way. So that was a little bit tricky before you have all the screws in because it would just kind of move all over the place. But we got them all lined up, so that worked out well. And I feel like these instructions are very easy to read. Um, the Tinker Crate ones, I wouldn't say they're difficult. There's just a lot more reading involved in those ones. And maybe there will be in these ones and other ones, but this one, 
Most of it's pictures. There's a few words for him to read, but so much of the instruction is pictures, which I think is a lot better sometimes for him because he will just rush through everything. Like he read the little words that he needed to, but the Tinker Crate occasionally had so many words that he just wouldn't pay attention to them. And then he made mistakes and then we'd have to go back and fix it. <laughs> so I felt like this was a little bit better the way the instructions were. I thought they were very clear. It was very easy to see in the pictures what he was supposed to do. But again, he just needed a little bit of extra help sitting there holding a few things, making sure we were getting things right with the lock. Obviously, that's the biggest part, part of this whole project. So it'll be interesting to see if some of the other projects have as intricate workings as this one did, or if it'll be something that it's a little bit easier for him to do it all by himself. So I'm excited to see what our next Eureka crate is. And if you enjoy seeing these types of videos, please give us a thumbs up and I will see you next time.